when might the Chinese market have fallen enough to the point where you feel it is, broadly speaking, much more investable? Well, you know, I would say the tightening usually happens uh, and, you know, the breaking of implicit guarantees and so on and so forth. You know, the last time this happened was basically late 2017 and early 2018. And indeed, the policymakers usually take on counter cyclical policy. So when the economy is running very strong and they feel like it can tolerate such tightening and such structural reforms, that's when they will actually push forward. So it is a reflection of the current strength of the fundamentals. Um, and it's actually something that should be viewed as a positive over the medium to longer term. Um, however, I would say depending on you know when the market comes off enough to be attractive, I think it really depends on which part of the China market you're talking about. So for example, if you look at right now, the Hong Kong market is actually still fairly depressed in many areas and valuation is still very uh, low versus history and positioning is not particularly uh, high. Uh, comparatively speaking, if you look at the ADR market, which is mainly TMT names um, listed in the US that are uh, Chinese companies, or if you look at certain growthy parts of the A-share market or the SMIC caps in the A-share market, those are areas that have probably run quite a bit last year and where the valuation is particularly uh, sensitive to any potential monetary tightening. So those are the areas that probably have to reset a bit more before they can become you know, much more attractive in terms of risk reward. Helen, good morning. Thanks joining in this conversation. Do you think the PBOC's approach uh, towards uh, uh, policy tightening would be more like start, stop, start, stop, depending on financial conditions. Uh, and so right now they've done their bit. I think they always want to be ahead of the curve in terms of countercyclical policy. And I think various policymakers have made it very clear that they're extremely concerned about being too loose from a global perspective. And the fact that China is tightening first and no one else really is means that, you know, the currency has been strengthening and there's been a lot of uh, capital inflow. But they're looking forward and saying in a few quarters time, if that's no longer the case, are we going to have massive capital outflow? And in case there is something that goes wrong with the global economy and the recovery is no longer in sight, are we going to have any ammunition left to counteract that? from a global central bank's perspective. So I think they're trying to get ahead of the curve and trying to plan in advance. Um, so generally speaking, right now, I would say the momentum in terms of global recovery is so strong uh, because of vaccinations, because of fiscal policy, yeah. because of just the low base, that it's not yet start, stop, start, stop. But at some point in the coming quarters, it could become so if either the um, you know, fundamental recovery is no longer as robust as before, or there is any kind of COVID resurgence, any kind of bumps along the road that might challenge that. But generally speaking, I think right now they're looking more at fundamentals than financial conditions, because right now financial conditions everywhere uh, are extremely, extremely loose, uh, including in China, despite the recent uh, tightening stance.